from absolutely ancient structures now hosting the likes of restaurants, novelty shops, and even restless spirits, to some of the most famous and infamous historic monuments known to man. We've had quite a few requests in favor of an upload detailing the many infestations harbored within the limits of the Eternal City. And if that downright impressive nickname doesn't sound familiar to you, well, you're probably not from Italy. That's right, the speakeasy is chilled to bring you our long-awaited list of picks for the most haunted places in the breathtaking city of Rome. Let's take a look. Number 5, St. Angelo Bridge. St. Angelo Bridge is a pedestrian crossing spanning over the River Tiber and connecting the city center to Castle St. Angelo or the Mausoleum of Hadrian. It boasts a reputation as one of the most remarkable bridges in the country, if not the world. Originally named the Alien Bridge, it was first completed in 135 CE under the order and command of the Roman Emperor Hadrian. Hadrian's purpose for the bridge wasn't much different than our current purpose, as he simply desired a faster means of getting his family from the city center to the mausoleum. Through the 7th century, the bridge and mausoleum were renamed St. Angelo. As legend tells it, they were renamed due to the sighting of the Archangel Michael, who is said to have appeared atop the castle to announce the end of the plague. Over its long existence, various pilgrimages have also used the bridge en route to get to and from St. Peter's Basilica. In 1450, tragically, jubilee festivities were too much for the old crossing. It's recorded that the party became so large, portions of the bridge began giving way resulting in numerous drownings in the waters below. Shortly after, and in part due to this incident, several surrounding structures were torn down, the bridge reconstructed and widened. Through the 16th century, Pope Clement VII had statues of St. Peter and St. Paul placed at the high end of the bridge. Also through the 16th century, and for hundreds of years to follow, the bridge would display the bodies of those executed locally. Sounds like a pleasant place to take an afternoon walk. Through the 17th century, ten angel statues were added to the old overpass. Today, impressively, the bridge remains functional and open to pedestrian traffic, and is closely maintained by the city. Over the years, and not surprisingly with its grim past, a number of local legends and ghost stories surrounding St. Angelo Bridge have surfaced. The crossing is said to be haunted most famously by the ghost of one Beatrice Cenci. As the story goes, Beatrice was a young noblewoman whose father, Francesco, was known for being a highly abusive and evil man. It said Francesco would often beat his wife, Beatrice's mother, who ended up dying under mysterious circumstances. His second wife fared no better. It said that eventually the beatings weren't enough, that he began assaulting Beatrice and her brothers in other ways. Due to Francesco's status as a nobleman, his crimes were overlooked by the law, but not by Beatrice. And it's said that after failing to secure assistance, Beatrice took things into her own hands and began plotting. Francesco's family gathered tools from around the property and waited, and then when he was off guard, they ambushed him, beating him to death and throwing his body through a second floor window to conceal the crime as an accident. No one believed this story, however, and on September 11th of 1599, Beatrice and her family were beaten headed publicly on the bridge to make an example of what murder would yield regardless of cause or status. Now, each year on the eve of her execution, it's said her ghost can be seen walking the bridge, her own head in her hands. And although archaic law of the time deemed her nothing more than a criminal, Beatrice has become something of a symbol to the people of Rome, standing up against the elite through fear and pain of death. If you missed her September 11th show date, don't worry, some locals tell that she can appear really on any night, and not just on the bridge, within the castle as well. Another commonly cited spirit on San Angelo is said to be that of Giovanni Battista Bugatti, nicknamed Mastro Tita. Legend tells that Bugatti was an official executioner from 1796 to 1864, and it's now speculated that his kill count was over 500. His full-bodied apparition is commonly seen walking the stretch clad in a red executioner's cloak and offering tobacco to those he passes, just as he would his victims in life. Number 4. Piazza Nirvana 
Piazza Navona is a large square in Rome with ties back to the Stadium of Domitian circa the 1st century AD that now lays lined with various stores, restaurants, and vendors. The piazza also features several impressive marble fountains, awe-inspiring flora, and is widely considered one of the most beautiful of all of Rome's many squares. Originally, when the area acted as the stadium, Romans would gather to watch a wide range of festivals, parties, and sporting events. The square's area in particular was known as the competition arena. To this day, it retains the original shape of the stadium, hence its oblong, oval-like expanse. In later years, namely by the 15th century, it had been transformed into a public space that was used for housing the city market. Many of its fountains, statues, and features were added through the 17th century during the time of Pope Innocent X, whose family palace, Palazzo Pamphili, actually faced the piazza. From 1652 until 1866, the piazza was flooded each weekend in August for celebrations held by the Pamphili family. During the 19th century, the pavement's level was raised, resulting in attempted flooding literally pouring out and making these events no longer possible. Today, the piazza remains open to the public and acts as a place for events, tourism, and socialization. If you're in Rome and looking for the perfect haunt to check out, this is it. Free to enter, you can stay long hours, and you're more than likely to find yourself surrounded by various interesting street artists, painters, shops, live music performers, good eats, and more. Over its impressively long existence, a number of stories detailing the various hauntings of Piazza Nirvana have materialized. Most famously, the square is said to be haunted by the spirit of one Valeria Messalina, who lived here during the first century and whom was married to Emperor Claudius. It's said Valeria spent her every hour plotting attainment of the highest seats of power, sneaking behind Claudius's back, entertaining various affairs to get her way. After marrying a lover, Gaius Silius, they began plotting against Claudius, but the emperor, ever wise, discovered their plot. He sent a soldier to inform Valeria of the discovery of her betrayal, as well as to persuade her to end her own life to save herself the shame of a public execution. As the story goes, she couldn't manage to slit her own throat, and she was stabbed through the chest by the soldier's blade. The spirit of Valeria has been sighted all throughout the square and its various shops. Unfortunately, it seems death wasn't that great of a teacher, as most encounters involve exceedingly inappropriate advances toward any man appearing to have money, some even reporting being groped, pinched, or grabbed by unseen hands. Another legend surrounding the piazza tells of the spirit of Donna Olympia Madalcini, who lived in the area from the 15th to 16th centuries. Donna was sister-in-law to Pope Innocent X. Legend tells that she swindled money away from the Pope and his church, and that as he was dying, she grabbed the last of his coin and ran away through the square. Many believe her loss, guilt, and sorrow were too strong, and that her spirit was left to wonder. A number of reports detail an apparition thought to be Donna, clad in a widow's hood, arms full of gold and jewels, running through the piazza and into the night. In some accounts, she's described as laughing maniacally, but several who have attempted to follow her and have listened a bit longer have described hearing her laughter turn quickly to desperate sobs, cries for reprieve, right before she vanishes into nothingness, doomed to repeat her fate again and again into eternity. Lastly, but certainly not least, one legend tells that centuries ago, a vengeful old widow, possibly Donna, possibly someone else entirely, cast a vicious curse against love on the piazza. As the superstition goes, couples should be careful entering the area as those who walk around the square clock clockwise are in the clear, but those who walk counterclockwise will be broken up within six days. Whether or not you buy this old myth is up to you. Be careful. Number 3. The Capuchin Crypt the Capuchin Crypt is a small space holding several tiny chapels beneath the Church of Our Lady of the Conception of the Capuchins, which, in turn, contains the skeletal remains of around 4,000 bodies, most of which are believed to be Capuchin Friars. Construction of the church began in 1626 and was completed by 1631. During the year of its completion, monks were sent to the church, followed by some 300 carts carrying the bodies of deceased friars exhumed from other friaries. 
Soil from Jerusalem was also carted in and used in the interment process as the friars were laid to rest within the crypt. But as more monks passed over times, older skeletal remains were removed to make way for new bodies. These skeletons were then added to various decorative displays adorning the crypt. At various times when Romans' burying grounds were full, the Capuchin Crypt was also used to inter deceased poor who had no other resting grounds. The crypts were most actively used through the 1870s. Some of the crypts' historic skeletons remain wholly intact, still donning clothing from various eras. Some of the more notable still clad in Franciscan habits. A good majority of the remains within the crypt, however, were separated and added to various pieces of, get this, artwork across the walls. Though this may seem a bit dark, to have walls literally covered in bones, it's actually meant as a symbol, a reminder of one's own mortality, that one's physical body is not eternal, but that their soul is while also giving a nod to the natures of both mortality and the unpredictability of death. A plaque hanging in the crypt reads, What you are now, we once were. What we are now, you shall be. Spooky. In 1925, the old religious residence was torn down, making way for fresh limbs of urban growth and expansion. A new residence was later constructed nearby. Today, the crypt is open to the public for tours. There are a total of six chambers, all holding varying ranges of bone artwork, macabre decorations. On to our next portion, and need we even say it? A lot of people claim that this body-covered cavern is crawling with apparitions, and a number of reports detail shadowy figures skulking about between the chambers, both extreme hot and cold spots, and orbs caught in various photos and videos. Many describe an eerie, unsettling feeling upon entering the crypt, but then again, what can you really expect when walking through literal corridors of the dead? Before the installation of electric lines, many accounts from visitors describe candles, lanterns, and torches flickering, sometimes going out entirely, leaving their wielders in complete darkness, and several more frightening accounts told of whispers heard through the pitch black of the crypt. This phenomena has carried over into modern times, and many report lights flickering, even bulbs blowing out entirely, plunging the unsuspecting into a claustrophobic nightmare. Also reported from within the crypt is the overwhelming feeling of sadness, depression, fear. But many also chalk this up to its unique aesthetic. While photography is currently banned within the chapel, occasional rule breakers have whipped out concealed phones or cameras only to find their photographs blurry, unfocused, or even to watch their batteries drain from 100% to dead in a matter of seconds. One of the most famous manifestations seen in and around the crypt is that of a Capuchin monk in a traditional robe, who sometimes appears followed by a group of fellow monks. This ghost and his friends have been described as seemingly so solid many mistake them as modern living monks or actors, until the group goes to move on and the monks promptly vanish into the surrounding darkness. Number 2. The Roman Forum the Roman Forum is a rectangular plaza surrounded by the ruins of important and ancient government buildings in the center of the city of Rome. The Forum has been the site of many prominent as well as historic religious, political, and social events and activities. According to legend, Rome was founded around 753 BCE, although the area was inhabited long before that. By this legend, brothers Romulus and Remus officialized the city together. But after a conflict, Romulus killed Remus, naming the city after himself. The story goes on to tell how the Forum was created by an alliance formed between Romulus and his rival. Titus Tadius. The valley where the Forum now sits laid between their territories, and was the spot at which, when the fighting ended, their weapons were laid down. It's widely accepted by historians that people actually begin gathering at the location of the Forum circa 500 BCE or so, at the beginning of the Roman Republic. The area was initially used as a marketplace, a place of socialization, and as a site for public gatherings. The Forum has undergone numerous expansions over its existence, one of the most notable under the rule of none other than Gaius Julius Caesar, when he rose to prominence and power in 49 BCE. In charge of the project was Caesar's great-nephew, Augustus. 
Over the centuries, many monuments, statues, arches, and various buildings were constructed around the Forum. Although there were many squares throughout the surrounding land, the Forum was by far the most significant. Housing Rome's elections, criminal trials, gladiator matches, religious ceremonies, educations programs, and both religious and political gatherings and events. Following the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476, many of the Forum's buildings were left abandoned, some repurposed by Christian churches. Through the Middle Ages, the area became overgrown and was largely used to graze cattle. The Forum was officially uncovered by archaeologists in 1803 and took over a century to fully excavate, with new remnants of the past turning up to this very day. In as recently as 2009, weathered pottery was unearthed here, and samples taken from the specimen suggest that the Forum may actually be quite a bit older than originally thought. Today, the entirety of the Forum is open to the public and attracts tourists from across the globe. Ghost stories surrounding the Roman Forum started sometime during the 4th century, when, according to legend, Pope Sylvester I was called upon to exorcise a particularly powerful demon from the earth there, who it said was appearing in the form of a mighty dragon. The most famous spirit seen in and around the Forum is thought to be that of none other than Julius Caesar. And while this has led to the misconception that Caesar was buried in the Forum, he wasn't. The Temple of Caesar actually marks the place of the legendary ruler's cremation following his assassination. It's unknown why Caesar's spirit wanders the grounds here, but many suspect it was just a place that he desired in life. Those who have encountered him report him as appearing surprisingly solid, even as interacting with the living at great length, before turning stoically, taking a few steps, and fading from sight. Several local tales also tell that the legendary Romulus himself is buried within the Forum, or very nearby, and a number of reports detail the shadowy apparition of a man seemingly silhouetted in military gear who vanishes shortly after being sighted or approached. While these apparitions certainly are the most famous or infamous, it's thought that the Forum may play host to hundreds, even thousands of additional unidentified spirits. And a number of reports also detail groups of shadowy apparitions, full-bodied specters in ancient clothing, and the feeling of being surrounded by a large crowd when the area is completely empty. Several fascinating accounts detail visitors arriving to the Forum early to find ghostly guards clad in traditional armor and weaponry standing along the wall as well as flanking the doors, fulfilling a duty long expired. Some describe these apparitions as seemingly going about their daily lives, daily lives that more than likely occurred thousands of years in the past, before slowly fading out of sight. Personal electronics entering the area have been known to go dead almost instantly, orbs and other anomalies are commonly captured in photographs, and many report the unshakable feeling of being watched by unseen eyes. Lastly, but certainly not least, a number of reports have sprouted up from those living near the Forum, detailing nights in which commotion can be heard, swords clashing, laughing, ancient music. When these locals go to investigate, however, they find the site completely empty, everything closed down. Number 1. The Colosseum The Colosseum, also known as the Flavian Amphitheater, really needs no introduction. This oval-shaped, open-air entertainment venue in the center of Rome has been acting as just that, entertainment for nearly 2,000 years. At one time, it was the largest amphitheater ever constructed, and held between 50,000 and 80,000 spectators. Construction of the Colosseum began in the ripe year of 72 AD, under the rule of Emperor Vespasian. Vespasian passed away shortly after in 79 AD. His son and successor, Emperor Titus, continued the project until its completion in 80 AD. The Colosseum was built over the former site of Emperor Nero's Golden House shortly after his death. In addition to hosting its infamous entertainment events, the Colosseum was also built and intended to signify the military prowess of the Flavian dynasty, being of Vespasian, Titus, and Titus's younger brother, Domitian. Upon its completion, inaugural games were held and lasted for more than 100 days straight. Titus was off to a rough start as a ruler, coming back to power at the time of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, a massive fire in Rome, and a particularly bad outbreak of bubonic plague. And he saw these games as a way to appease the gods as well as his people. 
As most of us are aware, these games weren't exactly Monopoly, and events generally included full-on battles to the death, executions of criminals, gladiators fighting or hunting fearsome animals, and it's thought that sometimes the Colosseum would even be filled to allow for great naval battles. The stadium was also used for occasional dramas and story recreations from classic mythology. Traditions died hard, much like many of the Colosseum's contenders, and games continued into the late 6th century where they slowly ground to a halt. A small chapel was built into the structure and the arena was repurposed as a cemetery. Many of its wall outlets converted to housing. Around 1200 AD, the Frangipani family moved into the Colosseum, fortified it, and repurposed it as a castle. By 1349, the south wall had begun to crumble and following a particularly nasty earthquake all but collapsed. The fallen stone was used to build several palaces, churches, hospitals, and other prominent structures across Rome. Shortly after the area was cleared, a religious order moved into the dilapidated ruins. This order remained in the Colosseum until the turn of the 19th century. By the 20th century, the once great venue had been completely stripped of all remaining metal and stoneworks, leaving only a skeleton of what once was. It was around this time that the city stepped in, rapidly attempting to preserve what was left. Between the years of 1993 and 2000, $19.3 million was poured into extensive renovations. Today, the Colosseum stands as one of Rome's most famous tourist destinations, hosting millions of visitors each year. Though the interior can no longer support large crowds, several musicians and performers have utilized it as backdrops for their shows, namely Ray Charles, Paul McCartney, Elton John, and Billy Joel. Rather morbidly, the Colosseum is also used to mark various death penalties. At night, it's illuminated with white to gold when someone on death row gets removed or when outlaws are served their final fate. If you're familiar with history and not just the condensed versions we provide, picking the Colosseum as number one for the list really shouldn't shock anyone. It's seen an estimated 400,000 human deaths, over a million large animal mortalities, and at the end of the day, almost not surprisingly, a number of both terrifying and fascinating stories have emerged from the stone archways over its extended existence. So many stories, in fact, that the Colosseum is widely considered one of the most haunted places in all of Italy, Europe, and possibly even the world. Many report extreme cold spots on hot nights, disembodied footsteps sometimes in large numbers, and even the full-bodied apparitions of Roman soldiers in ancient uniforms, sometimes guarding the gates and at others patrolling the perimeter. These phantom soldiers are said to appear most often at night. Many report hearing the disembodied sounds of horses' hooves both in and around the structure, even finding fresh hoof prints in the dirt, chariot tracks. Those lucky enough to enter the Colosseum and stand in the ancient stadium have reported hearing what sound like animals' growls, yips, snarls, and elephants trumpeting, and most suspect these are the spirits of the many creatures slayed here. Also reported near and within the Colosseum are the full-bodied apparitions of gladiators, some monstrous towering over any nearby, clad in fearsome armor and wielding deadly weaponry, others donning old sailor's garb. Many mistake these phantoms for the living or for actors only to approach and watch them fade away into dust. Beneath the Colosseum lies the infamous Hypogeum, the place where levers, pulleys, props, animals, and fighters were stored and gathered before and after events. Many who have descended into this demence report hearing disembodied cries, orders shouted from nowhere, levers being thrown, as if the action is continuing from the other side. When prisoners were to be executed, a common practice was to strip them down to nothing in the Hypogeum, paint them with ridiculous and insulting symbols, and then throw them into the arena, with either brutal armed soldiers or packs of wild animals. Several disturbing tales tell of visitors to the Hypogeum being approached by the tormented souls of these criminals, sometimes cowering, shaking in fear, forced to live out their shame into eternity. Lastly, a number of stories from solo explorers, daredevils, and those who have gotten just a little too curious and sneaked through the gates by themselves tell of a strange phenomenon. Upon walking up the ramps to enter the actual fighting arena from the Hypogeum, many report being overcome with the extreme and inexplicable feeling of adrenaline, nerves, almost a fight-or-flight response. A number of these reports also detail the sensation of many strong hands patting them on the back, pushing them forward towards the arena 
of disembodied whispers chants of encouragement as if it's their turn to find glory in the ring. This occurrence has sent all but the hardiest adventurers running in terror, but the brave, those who have overcome this strange fear, and have actually walked into the ring report watching in awe as a ghostly crowd suddenly materializes in the stadium surrounding them. Cheers and music fill the air, night changes to day, and a dangerous looking opponent or animal appears in front. These supernaturally selected warriors report feeling suddenly energized, ready for battle, truly alive, but only briefly as, right at the moment of clashing, everything disappears, leaving them alone in the dirt under the stars. With an absolutely ridiculous history, its astounding range of hauntings, and the severity of their effects on the living, it's really no wonder we chose the one and only Colosseum as our pick for the most haunted place in all of Rome. Thank you everyone for tuning in to our list of picks for the most haunted places in Rome. If you enjoyed this upload as much as we enjoyed making it for you, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on so you know when fresh content is coming out. Click that like button down below and most importantly, share this video and our channel with anyone you think could use a little scare. Until next time.